you ever you ever find yourself getting stuck um in your own head kind of stuck in your own ways you know i think um you know there's a lot of times in life we can become so guilty of of just being stuck and rigid in things that really we don't need to be stuck and rigid about you know when you when you think about scripture and what it means to walk with jesus there are certain things that we need to be stuck and rigid about right like the gospel and what the gospel is that jesus um, is God's son. He was born of a virgin, that he lived a sinless life, that he died on a cross for our sins, paying the price and rose again to new life three days later. There are certain core doctrines that we believe that are just non-negotiable, of course. And then there's a lot of other things that go along um, uh, that I would say peripheral issues that we can debate all day long. It doesn't mean that you're less of a Christian or more of a Christian. Um you know, but there are certain dividing lines that are important. And what's interesting here is, is that's what Jesus is challenging is, is, is the ways that we get stuck in our head, because, you know, it's easy to read about the Pharisees and all the things that they were doing and, and bypass them when really we need to self-reflect of where am I stuck in my own head and rigid in my own ways? And do I need to be rigid in those ways? And so that's kind of where we are right now. You know, Chuck talked about last week, um, with verse 36, um, this kind of new and better, new and better, new and better. Um, man, there's so much refreshment in knowing Jesus in loving Jesus and the newness that comes with that. And so he's telling these parables as a way to connect with the people, with the audience, with the hearers of, of, of pointing to himself as the awaited Messiah. And so last week, again, Chuck, it's ridiculous to tear pieces off a brand new coat piece of clothing and sew them on an old piece of clothing as a patch. It doesn't make sense. So this next one really doesn't make sense. And it's simply this, that um, no one, verse 37, and no one puts new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the new wine will burst the skins and it will be spilled and the skins will be destroyed. Verse 38, but new wine must be put into fresh wine skins. Now, what he's saying there, like this is a culture where finding fresh, clean drinking water was at a premium. This is a culture that actually drank a lot of wine because there was more wine than there was water. And so there's a whole lot behind that. But essentially the wine, they would um, it would ferment in vats for the first fermentation. And then the second fermentation they would put into wine skins. And so the wine skin would fill up with gas as the wine fermented. And so what he's saying is this isn't going to fit in your old way of thinking like the, this new wine in an old wine skin would blow that wine skin apart, right? The gas would explode it. It would crack and all the wine would spill out. And so again, Jesus is challenging them in the way of their thinking. And so let me ask you, let me ask you, as I started, you know, I kind of, um, I get stuck in my own ways. I get stuck in my own line of thinking that things have to be a certain way, right? That they have to go a certain way. They have to be a certain way. And this really challenged me in this moment to say, do they? Like hold strong to what needs to be held strong to, but hold loose what needs to be held loose to. You know, it's kind of like church, right? Everybody has their own definition of church. You know, um, church has to be two or three songs. Maybe some believe church has to be a choir. Maybe some believe church has to have a rock band. Some believe it has to be small. Some believe it has to be big. You know, some believe have their, everybody has their own beliefs and their own definition of church. You know, the preacher needs to preach a 20 minute sermon. The preacher needs to preach an hour sermon. Like, again, everybody fills in the gap with their own preferences because they're stuck in their head. And so even for me, you know, I love what Chuck and I on Sundays, our definition of church doesn't have music. It's short, but it's based on God's word and community. And that's what the early church was based on. God's word and God's community, everything else is great like it's not a bad thing to have a rock band it's not a bad thing to have a choir it's not a bad thing to sing songs but at the end of the day it shouldn't be about our preferences so let me ask you like like what is that for you how are you stuck in your own head what are you holding rigid to that maybe god's trying to help you loosen up a little bit because there's a new and better way we can't step forward into the future that god has for us while we're hanging on with all our might to the past that he wants us to let go of so I don't know what that is for you, um, but I would invite you to take that to the Lord and pray through it. And hey, thank you so much for spending some time with us. We'll see you next week.